everyone and welcome back to Vicky Makes and Builds. I have another puzzle for you today. It is one I think I might have mentioned in a previous video. Um, I'm doing another Clementoni puzzle and um, now Clementoni was the manufacturer that did the 13,200 piece Disney Orchestra uh, that if you are a subscriber of my channel will know uh, that I have also done and I loved it, loved it, loved it, loved it. So I'm really looking forward to doing another Clementoni. Now, this one's another big one, but not quite as big. This one is 6,000 pieces. It is called the Venice Sunset. And here it is. So, um... Yeah, 6,000 pieces, not a piece count I have ever tried um, in terms of large puzzles. Um, and this one isn't actually split into different bags like the Lodge Disney Orchestra one was. So it's just 6,000 pieces. Now that's the biggest amount of pieces I've tackled kind of in one go. Um, so I've had to do a little bit of a uh, little bit of thinking about how I'm going to do this because it won't fit on my uh, white table that I use to do my puzzles, and um, it's gonna be tough to do on felt because I'll end up on the floor for long periods of time, and that's pretty hard on the knees. <laughs> so I have decided to buy myself some foam board. And I have just one piece here. You can buy it in kind of packs of like 10. Uh, can't really fit it on the screen very well. But anyway, here's just one sheet and it's A1 sized. And I worked out from uh, the size of this puzzle that if I put four together, kind of in landscape, two at the top, two at the bottom, um, then I can fit the whole puzzle on. And not only that, but I can also stack it up at the end of my puzzling day and put it away, which is important because I can't just leave the puzzle out in my lounge, which is where I do my puzzles. So, um, yeah, so slightly, slightly different uh, approach. Um, not used the foam board before but I know a lot of people do use that for their puzzles and um, it's white as well which is good because I like you know to be able to see the contrast of the puzzles against the white background so uh, yeah so that's how I'm going to tackle this one um, again with it being large I am going to be sorting through all the pieces <laughs> I am not looking forward to sorting 6,000 pieces <laughs> But I think I'm going to have to. I think if I don't, uh, then I might get way more frustrated down the line. Uh, but yeah, so I'm really looking forward to giving this a start. Now, I, I'm, I'm going to go through uh, my sorted piles with you once I've done the sorting. Again, I kind of find that when I do sort large puzzles, uh, that... Uh, I change my mind about what I'm sorting them into, like whilst I'm doing it. So uh, I kind of, you know, because I sort of start off with one idea and end up doing something completely different, it just seems to make more sense just to go through all that once it's done. But looking at the picture, um, it's kind of sunset time of day. So there's a lot of kind of pastel pink shades on here. But if you look at it more closely, there's actually quite a lot of other colours going on. You've got tablecloths here with like blue and with like orange you've got that kind of uh, bunting not bunting awning uh the black and white striped kind of awning outside that cafe there that's going to be pretty obvious i think um there's a lot of flowers uh kind of around the edge and on the left side as well um so yeah so there are one or two um one or two kind of categories jumping out at me that I think I'll probably be sorting into. There's obviously the gondoliers, quite a lot of red in those. Um, so yeah, I'm sure it'll come to me. I'm sure it'll come to me as I am doing this. Um, but yeah, I can't wait to get started with this. I really hope that you enjoy it and I will now get on with opening the bag and doing the sorting. 
Right, let's get this box opened up. So I'm just going to use some scissors because there's a bit of tape at the side keeping the lid on. Right, okay, so let's get this box opened up. Oh, <laughs> that is a lot of pieces. <laughs> a lot of pieces. I'll put the lid back there so it's not overshadowing. Um, okay, we have a sheet here, just general info, I think. Oh, according to this, uh, a 6,000 piece Clementoni puzzle has 6,016 pieces in it. So that seems to be the case with all of the different piece count puzzles. This The reality is that they're slightly different. Uh, I mean, I don't know if you've seen my uh, large Disney orchestra puzzle that I did by then. That says 13,200 on the box, but it's actually 13,224. So similar, similar scenario here. 16 more pieces than it says on the box. But uh, yeah, so that's kind of the important info from this. We obviously have a large bag of pieces. Uh, no poster with this one. Uh, oh my, <laughs> not looking forward to sorting all these, but anyway, let's get the bag open and we will see what we can see. Oh, right. Oh goodness, is this going to overflow? I hope not. Okay, a little few stuck in the bag here. There we go. I just uh, should briefly mention here as well, by the way, uh, that uh, this puzzle was sent to me by Smith's Toys here in the UK. And I just wanted to uh, thank them very much for sending me this uh, to build for them. I am... Um, I've, I've loved so much doing the Disney Orchestra, the large piece count puzzles that I can see myself doing large piece count puzzles, you know, at least one, possibly two a year. Um, and I do include 6,000 6, pieces in that uh, category. So um, there's a few together and uh, not too difficult to pull apart. Uh, quite a lot together, though. Um so the pieces feel just as good as they did in the Disney Orchestra puzzle. Um, really nice and thick, this lovely blue card at the back. It, it feels quite grainy. I suspect there'll be quite a lot of puzzle dust in this one. Um, but really good quality, lovely matte finish. Um, similar kind of it, ribbon cut, but, you know, enough sort of variety and shapes to um, for that to, you know, help with building it and putting it together. You've got, um, you know, different different piece shapes to the, the standard obvious ones. Uh, so this is looking good. This is looking good. Now, uh, I can see a lot of blue here, obviously. For some reason, when you're looking at puzzles like this, more seem to be overturned than they do the right way up. Uh, not quite sure how that is in keeping with the law of averages, but uh, I mean, I can see again, like I said, a lot of pink. Um, so it's possible that I may have to categorize by kind of shades of pink and shades of orange. There's a lot of flowers. Can't tell if that's flowers actually, but I can see a lot of flowers. There's a flower there. So I think I'll probably be sorting into um, flowers as well. You've got a little bit of the awning there, some red there. Not sure if that's from a gondola. Um, so yeah, I think this will, it'll become more evident what I sort them into once I get started. Obviously there'll be edges. Um, I'll start with the edge like I usually do with these puzzles. I think that's going to help uh, having a framework to kind of build within. Um, and yeah, so, so far, so good. 
Really, really looking forward to this. Lovely quality pieces. I'm really looking forward to putting this together. So um, yeah, I will stop putting it off and get on with my sorting just now. Goodness. Oh, yeah, 6,000 pieces worth of sorting. That's um, quite a long time, isn't it? <laughs> well, it does. It takes quite a long time. Right. I'm going to go through these pieces with you. Um, I'll start with the only pile that I have sorted by shape, that being the edge pieces. That's that pile there. Quite a few of those, but there would be because it's quite a big puzzle. And the pieces sharing the box with the edges are um, anything I could find with leaves and flowers. So that is quite a big pile because on this picture, there are a lot of flowers. Now then, I will try and show you here. Flowers there, <laughs> and all the way down there, and there and bushes there, and some trees up there, and some more flowers there, and more flowers there, and they are scattered across the puzzle. So that pile, I suspect, will need further sorting, um, but I'm not going to even consider those until uh, until I've got a good few other pieces in. Um, right, another large pile here. This is pink kind of pastel pink shade pieces um, that I think are largely the front faces of the uh, pink buildings. Uh, again, another rather large pile. And um, one thing I've noticed uh, when sorting by kind of shades of colour are that you will more likely to have uh, a mixture of different parts of the puzzle in there because there are often uh, lots of different parts of the puzzle that might be a similar shade, but they're different things. And so, you know, I think, again, that might require a little bit further sorting, but I'm not doing the large piles until the end. Um, now, this pile has been sorted by texture. This is water pieces. So there are lots of different colours in here. So that's obviously a water piece. And that's kind of a pinky, peachy colour. And then you've also got that, which is a water piece, which is a dark blue. So many and varied in colour those pieces are, but it was obvious that they were, in fact, water. So again, further sorting probably will be needed. But all the big piles I'm not tackling until I've got rid of some of these smaller ones. So over here, that's another large pile of pieces. That That pile is a bit miscellaneous. That's really dark shadowed pieces or bits with like really dark parts to them um but I, there's no one single bit of the puzzle really that that pile covers I think that they will be all over the place that's probably my most miscellaneous pile um this is pieces that have like this this kind of mottled white stone on. Um, this is a pile of those pieces. And then over here, this is this is my the box that I like. This these are these are my smaller piles. Um, that's all pieces I could find with brick wall. Uh, they they stood out as being pretty obvious. That's a, a nice clear kind of pile of pieces there, a nice clear category. That is a tiny pile, and that's all the pieces I found with the yellow and green stripe on them. Um, then we've got this pile here, which is red pieces, which I think largely belong to um, gondolas. 
that have these red cushions on them. So you've got there, there. That gondola itself is red. And you've got a cushion there and a cushion there. Um, so I have called that pile the gondola pile because there's, there's a few other bits of um, popped in there that aren't necessarily red, but that I think belong to gondolas. So that's the gondola pile. Uh, I'm just going to skip over that one for a second. I'll come back to that one. This pile here, it's a fish big one. This is any pieces where there are windows on it. So windows with this kind of purpley colour on the inside or windows with like shutters on like that one. Anything where it's obviously a window in the side of one of the buildings. Uh, now coming back to this one, this is one of the tablecloths alongside this one, which is the other tablecloth. So um, just going back to the box again. Here at the front, at the bottom, you have... Oh, there is a cat. Huh, I found a piece earlier that looked like it was whiskers of a cat, and I couldn't remember seeing an animal on this picture, but there is. <laughs> okay, no doubt that piece will turn up again. Um, anyway, uh, what was I saying? Tablecloths, yes. So you've got this big blue tablecloth here, uh, of which those pieces there, but then sort of... Tucked behind it is another tablecloth here, similar pattern, just a different colour. And that is there. That's a much smaller pile. Um, but a lot of that is obscured by these um, kind of ornate curly metal bits on this chair, um, which some of which may have ended up in other piles of pieces. This is what I think is largely the awning above the cafe. And I also think that there are quite a few um, maybe railings on this bridge, uh, like this kind of banister type thing, um, because this sort of creates a, a yellow and, and black sort of stripy effect. Uh, so any pieces like that with this sort of thing on and that sort of thing on, um, those are what uh, this pile is here. And then down here, again, this is another pile sorted by colour. So again, I think this is a bit of a mixture, but um, these are kind of pieces with bright yellow and orange and some red on them like that. Um, again, I think there are windows in here. I think there are bits of buildings. There's like candles uh, on these tables here and there's lanterns. Um, so I think... There's a window here with like a, a light on inside the building. So they're in there as well. Possibly some little bits of the sky in there as well. But that one has been sorted by colour again. Uh, but it's not a huge pile. So that I don't think that will be too bad. This one is another pile that I've sorted by texture. There are lots of different colours in here. But these are ones where the colours kind of blend into each other. Um, really sort of softly. Um, and I think that these pieces are mostly the sky, the clouds in the sky. There's so much colour in this sky. You've got it's a bit darker up here with kind of purples and blues. And then you come further down and it becomes more yellow and orange. And then there's some pink there and some birds flying. And then you've got really yellow and orange here. And it's it, but it's quite sort of blended. The colours aren't really sharply contrasted to each other. And that is where that pile has come from. So I think most of those are the sky. Some of them might be water pieces. Um, but again, it's not a huge pile of pieces. I think that that one won't be too bad. Yeah. I cannot wait to start this puzzle now. Yes, I can do the edge. Next. I will be doing the edge. So it's now time to get out my uh, white boards to put those together and get this, uh, get the edge of this puzzle sorted. Right. Right, whoa, what a marathon task it is, building an edge for a 6,000 piece puzzle. Crazy. 
Um, as you can see, it only just fits on my board, <laughs> boards. Uh, there's actually four pieces of foam board together here. And I did measure it up when I was purchasing the board. So um, I knew it would fit, but it is barely. Uh, now I am missing some pieces from the edge. So the bottom edge is the only one that's actually complete. And I counted up the pieces and there are 94 pieces in this bottom edge. However, the top, uh, which I counted, and you'll need to forgive me, I've got the um, kind of a tripod in the way here. But anyway, the top has a few bits missing. There's one there. There's one there. There is one there. Uh, or possibly two there. Anyway, I counted 90 in the top uh, top border so i'm four pieces missing from that in fact there's two over there so it's obviously just kind of one there one there and then there's actually two there you can't really see very well but there's two there that are missing so i'm missing four from the top now i'm missing some from both uh the right and the left hand side however i counted 62 pieces in each but there are definitely at least two missing from this edge there's one there and there's one there. Uh, when you come over to this edge, uh, I've got a gap there and I've got a gap up there. So my best guess is that there are 64 pieces on both sides and that I'm missing two on each side. So in total, I'm missing, I think, two, four, and then another four, eight. I'm missing eight edge pieces. Now, I have no doubt that I have missorted those. I know that I caught myself actually throwing edge pieces into other piles sometimes and even vice versa. I found a few of these <laughs> in the uh, in the edge piece pile as well. Some of them may have just kind of fallen in from the pile next door and some were kind of stuck together. Uh, so I just took them apart. But uh, yeah, my point being, this sorting happens quite a lot. And given the marathon nature of this, this sort, because there were 6,000 pieces, it does not at all surprise me that I'm missing eight edge pieces. But anyway, this is what it looks like on the board. It's basically a giant rectangle. It's very difficult to get in shot because it is so big. Um, but um, I got the boards out to do the border. But what I will be doing now is just kind of breaking the border apart about halfway on each side. And I will be uh, putting the boards away for now um because it's very awkward to um kind of do the puzzle when it sticks out so far over my table um i couldn't actually sit to do the edge i had to um I had to stand and do it which was a little bit sore on the back so <laughs> i'm going to put the border away uh, it's the last you'll see of it for a little while at least and i'm going to piece the other piles of pieces together on my table um until such time as um I have enough done to kind of transfer it into the puzzle as a whole. So it'll be bye bye border for now. And hopefully I will reunite you with your missing pieces very, very soon.
Okay, so I've been going through the pile of pieces um, that are everything I can find with like window frames on. And I've put together a few full windows and also some kind of partial windows. It was becoming clear that I had quite a few pieces missing. So I ended up raiding the pile of pink pieces that were all kind of meant to be part of the pink building. And um, you can just see kind of the pink colour just at the edges of these windows here. And I actually found a lot of the window frame pieces in there as well. So there was a little bit of kind of missorting going on, obviously. Um, I think I must have just been getting tired towards the end. But uh, anyway, as well as, you know, some of the pieces I still had left, I managed to find a good deal more. So I've got this little pile to go at now. And I'm going to try and fill in as many of these pieces as I can before I transfer these over to uh, one of the boards. So here we go with more windows. <laughs> Okay, so since putting together things like the window frames, um, I'm finding that I'm getting lots of bits of the puzzle together, but it's still very much kind of separate. Um, all these pieces, I know roughly that they go sort of there uh, in the context of the wider puzzle, but you know, they're not really attached to each other. So what I thought I would do now in an attempt to sort of fill this out a bit. Now that I've kind of got an idea of which windows go on which building and what the kind of faces of the buildings look like, I feel like now I can go through this pile of pieces here, which is fairly big. This is all the pink pieces that are separated. And I want to go through this and just try and uh, thin out this pile a bit and pick out pieces, for example, like this, um, which I know will go somewhere up here, this kind of peach mottled um, effect uh, that they have up here. Um, I'm going to look for pieces like that to put together and just try and fill out this section a bit. And also pieces maybe like this, where there's kind of pink and orange. Um, and anywhere really where I recognise where a piece will go, I'll uh, I'll pull them out and I'll try and thin that pile out a bit. Um, and uh, what I was also going to do was go through this dark pieces pile again. I've already thinned this one out just a little bit, but what I want to do now is find pieces, for example, like this and this, which I know go on the foreground area underneath where the uh, the cafe tables are, uh, because uh, that part of the puzzle is actually, I'm going to show you, but it's kind of down here on the floor, so it uh, might be a little bit darker. But anyway, the cafe area where these two large tables are, this kind of areas of floor here, and there's a gap here, which I'd really like to fill out because really this kind of quadrant of the puzzle is the most filled out. Um, and the more gaps I can fill in now, uh, the more it's going to feel like I'm getting somewhere with it because it's still very spread apart at the moment. I don't know if that's because I'm sort of doing it on four different boards. So it all just feels like it's not coming together. I mean, it is. I mean, there's definitely big areas of the puzzle that are getting done. But uh, yeah, so just going to try and attempt to just piece some of the gaps, uh, fill in some of the gaps and piece some of these kind of floating bits that I've done together. And then hopefully it'll look a little bit more filled out. So I'm off to do that just now.
Right, so the top two boards are really starting to come together now. And what I'm finding is that I'm starting to put in little bits of sky uh, around the outside of these buildings. And what I would like to do now is uh, grab the sky pile of pieces that I have and uh, try and put that together. And that will really fill out these top two boards and I'll be able to suss out kind of an edge, a divide between that board and that board. Um, and that will help me kind of figure out where everything is. Because uh, as I say, I want to try and keep the puzzle on the board as long as I can before I have to start working on it as a whole puzzle. So I'm going to be working on the sky pieces just now. So have you ever heard the phrase, a game of two halves? Well, this is very much a puzzle of four quadrants. Um, I have so far uh, been successful in being able to keep the puzzle as small as possible for as long as possible. Um, but I'm getting to the point now where the quadrants are getting filled up enough for me to have to count the pieces and make sure I've not got pieces on one board that should be on another board um, because they only just fit on the individual board. So um, when I'm actually working on another part, um, what I tend to do is um, transfer it over to the table where I can just work on it separately and then put it in place afterwards. Now, the um, largest areas of gap where that I haven't done yet are the um, two of the buildings. I mean, the buildings I've done already aren't fully complete, but it's mostly just filling in gaps. So, but I haven't done any of this building here, apart from a few windows, which I've got over there. And I've moved those off the other boards so that I can kind of use those to try and fit these pinks in place, because I'm going to work on this building next. Um, the other building I haven't done is this one here. So I've done this and this and this one here and there's a wee bit of this one that I haven't done because there's a lot of flowers on this one and a little bit of the facier up here that I haven't done. But mostly that side's finished. Um, and the, the other big gap is the water, which I haven't done yet. So this bottom left quadrant is obviously quite gappy because there's all this water here. This one's probably the most full quadrant that I've done. Um, I've got this water to do here, but aside from that, it's just a few gaps and I'm more or less finished with that corner. So I really am, I'm getting there with this. I think once I've finished this, uh, building here, which is all of these pink pieces, or at least I hope so, uh, hope I've not missed many. Um, I've sort of picked out from the pile of pink pieces that I had all of these kind of dusky pinks. And as I say, I've got I've got some of the windows that I've already put together. So let's get on with it.
Okay, so here is progress on <laughs> the pink building. And it's fairly slow going at the moment. I can see, you can see that there's a big white area here that just hasn't been filled in. This is kind of filled in a bit, but it's partially obscured by this pile of pieces that I've just found here. Um, but the good thing is that I've sort of placed the windows and they're starting to fit into kind of the building at large. So, um, but I still have a lot of pieces left, which I've sorted by shape. Um, and I'm finding, I, th I think I'm starting to confuse myself because uh, I'm kind of raiding the pieces, looking for certain ones, and then I'm finding other ones and thinking, oh, I'll get those out as well. So those, those are all kind of the dark shadowed sort of bits of the window frames. And um, there's like a balcony as well, if I could show you the picture. Uh, so here you've got a balcony with like all these flowers. Well, it's not balcony, it's like a it's a flower box, essentially. And there's one here as well, which I think a lot of those pieces will kind of make up these. Some of them will be for, um, actually, I thought there might be some for over here, but these are mostly white. So yeah, so they'll, they'll be for that. So I'm not gonna kind of tackle that just yet until maybe I come to the point where I've only got this gap here. Um, and then I'll, I'll start to fill that in. Hopefully it'll come together a bit quicker, but I was starting to get a bit fatigued with doing this building. So what I thought I would do is, uh, go away and raid the box of flower pieces because in the middle of this section, there's a big box with pink flowers, one that I just showed you. So I thought I'll have a look through and see if I can find pieces like this with the white kind of framework and with the pink flowers. So, you know, I'm 99% certain this goes in here. In fact, I think it goes there. And move these pieces out of the way. There we go. Um, but <laughs> in my usual sort of way, I was going through the pieces and as I was going through, I was finding loads of other ones where I thought, oh, I know where that goes. Oh, I know where that goes as well. And they were from all over the puzzle. <laughs> so I've now got this pile of pieces here, which I've got to go and put in the other parts of uh, the puzzle. But I mean, the good news is um, it's it's lowered the um, flower pile of pieces quite significantly. But I'm finding that with this puzzle that I, whenever I raid a box of pieces, I pull out a load of other ones and I'm just generally just picking at all the piles now. Uh, back and forth and back and forth and that's kind of how it's going um so this pile here is a bit of a mixture because there are some pink flowers that look very similar to these flowers but they are over here now you can sort of tell which ones are for these um sometimes because you have this kind of wood in the background but this sort of dark bluey green is very similar to the background here so they'll need to be a little bit of back and forth to and fro with that to figure out which bits go in where but i think what i'm going to do now is go away and uh get rid of this pile <laughs> here um and also <sighs> this one here and then hopefully having filled out a bit more of this area I can fill in the rest with these pieces and it should fingers crossed come together a little bit quicker so here I go filling in some gaps
Okay, so I'm just going to run through this just so you can kind of make sense of what you're seeing. Um, the water actually hasn't turned out to be as difficult as I thought it would. It is slow going because there's so many different colours, but that's one of the things that's actually helping me here. Like in just this, in this one section, you've got yellow and orange, then you've got pink and purple, then you've got green, and then you're back to sort of dark orange, and then you've got more purple, and there's just because it's reflecting all the colours that are up here, um, I've been able to use my shuffle method and just pull out whatever colour I happen to be working on. So at first it was this bright orangey yellow, which I kind of worked upwards from the edge. And then I was picking out um, pieces with bits of gondola on. Um, so I was kind of working out from there. Then I was picking out greens um, and pinks and purples and just going through it bit by bit. And then the more I did, the more colours I was kind of blending into and I was able to pick out more and more. It helps that all these pieces are in a big box so I can spread them out. It doesn't look as though there are as many and there aren't really now, but... Um, if I can, I prefer to use the shuffle method than sorting because it just sorting just gets a bit laborious after a while. Sorting by shape, that is. So now I've just picked up out my latest pile of pieces and I'm going to put all them in and I'm just going to keep doing that until it's filled out. Now, these pieces at the edge here are ones I've put together, but that I've discovered actually go on the other side, on the bottom right quadrant of the puzzle, which also has a fair bit of water in it. So when I find those, I just sort of throw them over there. And uh, when I come to that bit, I will place those in. These ones at the bottom here are ones I've found that go on other quadrants. Uh, like, for example, this one here is a bit of the sky with kind of chimney on it. This here goes in one of the buildings. There's some flowers that I kind of recognise from other bits. So I've sort of got pieces everywhere, but there is method to the madness. So... I'm so close to finishing. So, so close. In fact, on one of the quadrants, I've only got like five pieces to find. Um, so anyway, I'll get to that point. But uh, yeah, water's coming along nicely. about to finish the first quadrant.
that's it. I've finished it. I'm so, so pleased with how it's turned out. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous puzzle and I have loved building it. Um, it's not normally the kind of puzzle I would do really. I don't have a problem with kind of cityscapes or landscapes per se. I just tend to pick different kinds of images, but um, I'm definitely converted, in fact, to the point where I'm looking into some of their other 6,000 piece kind of city and building puzzles. There's one called Las Vegas um, and there's another one that Clementoni do called Downtown. And I think the thing that I've really liked about this one and the thing I like about those ones is that the colours are just so vibrant um, and beautiful and just working with the pieces and everything is just, uh, it's just been a real, real joy. So I've really, really enjoyed it. Now, as you could see from the footage, I took the puzzle uh, like I did with the 13,200 piece Disney Orchestra. I taped it all up into sections and I took the puzzle to a community hall that's local to me to take some proper nice pictures of it. It does actually fit on my lounge floor, but um, it's a bit of a squeeze and I wouldn't have been able to properly photograph it without having things kind of peeking in at the edges. Uh, so I took it there and I laid it all out and um, took a few pictures of it and it's it's turned out really, really, really nicely. So the size of the puzzle, uh, now that it's done, is a 168 centimetres wide by 118 centimetres tall. So still very big. <laughs> Not 13,200 pieces big, but still really big. Um, in fact, it's just about as wide as I am tall. I'm five foot five and a bit, and the puzzle is five foot six and a bit. So, um, as you can see from this picture, it's uh, it's another one that's um, bigger than me. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, it's pretty impressive once it's all done and, and down and everything. Um, so you're probably wanting to know how long the puzzle took me to complete. Well, I can now tell you that the puzzle took me approximately 46 hours and 19 minutes. Now I say approximately, I have been keeping timings as diligently as I can, but very occasionally I forget. I remember to put the start time and then forget to put the end time. <laughs> So I have to, on occasion, work out roughly how long it took me, but that only happened on a couple of the days. So um, yeah, it took me around about 47 hours, give or take, which I'm pleased with. I did that over the course of three weeks um, and it actually came together quicker than I thought it would, or at least it felt like it did. Um, the only real delay for me was that uh, during the period that I was doing it, my children were off school for the half term holidays, so I kind of took a break from it to um, spend time with them. But uh, all told, hours wise, it took me about 46, 47 hours. So I would say the hardest parts of the puzzle were the sorting. Now, that's not necessarily hard in terms of actually physically doing it, it's just so tedious. <laughs> If you've watched any of my other videos, uh, then you'll know that I'm not a huge fan of sorting. I understand the necessity of it, I really do, and I would not do a puzzle this big without sorting. Definitely, definitely not. But it's probably the process that I least enjoy, and obviously this is 6,000 pieces, which is the most I've ever tackled in one go. So yeah, it's just a lot of pieces to sort. But once that was done, <laughs> I just, couldn't wait to get started and it made the whole process so much easier and um, it made the puzzle just a lot easier to kind of approach and to tackle and it comes together a bit more quickly as well. So uh, yeah, the sorting, that was, you know, one of the harder parts for me in terms of just kind of the tedium of it. Um, in terms of actually putting the puzzle together itself, um, the sky slowed me down a bit. That was pretty difficult, but it was, it was more because the colours blended together, um, but they would blend quite abruptly from sort of orange to blue or something like that. And sometimes I would be looking for a piece that I thought maybe had a bit of orange blending into a bit of blue, but the blending might actually happen on an edge of a piece. So I'd be looking around for a piece that I couldn't find and convincing myself that there was one missing and then realising afterwards that, you know, the piece I needed was just all blue or something like that. So um, yeah, a couple of wee kind of elements of the sky that sort of caught me out a couple of times, but that came together 
more quickly as I went along, as I kind of whittled down the pieces, but I found it more easy to handle by moving around the different sections of Sky and just kind of doing it that way. But actually, even though it slowed me down, I didn't find it in any way taxing to do. I, the colours are just so gorgeous, just these bright oranges and blues and just the whole sunset. It was just not a chore to look at at all, you know, and there were times when I was staring at the pieces for, you know, minutes on end. So um, it was hard, but I, I enjoyed the sky. In fact, the sky's probably the bit I enjoyed the most. Um, one bit that I did find a little bit frustrating was this pink building on the left hand side. Um, not only was it quite a large building, but it had so many of these windows with the white stonework around them. And it was because there were so many of them, it took a wee while to put them all together. And then it took a wee while to figure out which window went where. And there were also some windows like that on the other building on the opposite side. So there was just a bit of kind of lots of moving around and trying to figure out where things went. But again, once those bits started to come together, it kind of moved on a bit quickly. But yeah, that was probably the hardest bit of the puzzle, this pink building. Um, the rest of it, it came together without a hitch, really. Um, it wasn't, there was no one part of this puzzle that I found so difficult that, you know, I was just ready to throw it out the window or anything like that. It was, it was just challenging enough. Um, and I, I just enjoyed the whole process. I was pleasantly surprised by the water. I thought that was going to be really difficult, but actually it wasn't too bad at all. Um, and I was daunted by the 6,000 pieces element of it because even though I've done a big 13,200 piece puzzle, the largest section I did of that was two bags and that was 4,000 pieces. And that was quite tricky to fit in. Um, so, you know, I was a bit daunted by doing 6,000 in one go, but I actually have come up with a method for doing large piece count puzzles, which works for me. Uh, in particular with regard to filming the puzzle, but also with regard to fitting it in. Which brings me to another point. I was going to, at the end of this video, give you some hints and tips about uh, approaching large piece count puzzles, because I've now done two in a row, and I've learned a lot of things about how you can approach it, how you can manage it, methods for being able to fit it into a small place, because I do not live in a big house, I don't have my own puzzle room, um, you know, I can't just take up a room or a table. So uh, I really did have to overcome all these things. And I wanted to share with you my methods for approaching large piece count puzzles. But there was so much that I had to kind of say on the subject that I felt like the end of this video wasn't really the right place to do it. And I felt like it kind of deserved a video all on its own. So what I'm going to do is film a separate video on methods for approaching large piece count puzzles, how you could do one even in limited space and with, you know, a limited size table um, and how I managed to do that. Uh, because when I did the, the 13,200 piece puzzle, a lot, in fact, the vast majority of the comments I had on it and the questions I had on it were things along the line of how did you fit it in? I would love to do this puzzle, but I don't have the space or my table isn't big enough or, you know, words to that effect. That is what a lot of people were communicating. And I really think it's a shame because there are such a lot of gorgeous, beautiful, large piece count puzzles um, that, you know, I just know people would really, really enjoy doing. And if they, you know, if they think that perhaps space is an issue that stops them doing it, then, um, I'd like to kind of share with you my uh, method for tackling it and how I managed to make it doable in my three bedroom flat with my smallish table. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, look out for that. I'm hoping to get that out this week um, as a kind of a sister uh, video to this one and also to the the 13,200 piece one that I've done as well. So um, look out for that. I'm going to share with you all my hints and tips on uh, getting a big puzzle done and completed. Um, otherwise, there's not really much more for me to say on this. I hope that you enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed watching me put it together. Um, 
I would highly recommend it. I'm definitely a Clementoni uh, convert. I've done a few Clementonis now and I found every single one to be satisfying to do. Great quality, amazing images, lovely colours. Um, so I'd recommend it and um, I don't think it's too expensive either to buy this one. Um, you can still get hold of it. I think Amazon sell it. If you're in the UK, Smith Toys sell it. Um, and they've got it for quite a good price too, I think. So... Um, yeah, like if you if you really do like the look of this puzzle, I would highly recommend it. But otherwise, I just want to say thank you for watching. Uh, if you haven't already, please consider liking and subscribing to my channel for more awesome videos. And um, otherwise, I will see you next time and happy puzzling. Bye.